Did Christian homophobia come from a mistranslation of the Bible? This article is more than four months old. A new documentary challenges an alleged 1946 mistranslation that helped lead to a justification for Christian anti-gayness. Vivian Ho. Friday 1 December 2023 4.04 Eastern Standard Time Share. What if all the anti-gay, homophobic rhetoric that has come from the Christian right over these past few decades was rooted in a mistranslation of the Bible? In the documentary, 1946, The Mistranslation That Shifted Culture, researchers and scholars delve into the 1946 mistranslation of 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and explore how it fueled the Christian anti-gay movement that still thrives today. The film hinges its premise on the fact that the word, homosexual, appeared for the first time in the Bible in 1946, in an apparent mistranslation of the ancient Greek words malakoi, defined as someone effeminate who gives themselves up to a soft, decadent, lazy and indolent way of living, and arsenikoitai, a compound word that roughly translates to, male bed. While people could take it to mean man bedding man, within the context of the time, scholars believed that arsenikoitai alluded more to abusive, predatory behavior and pederasty than it does homosexuality. The director and producer Sharon, Rocky, Razio documents the journey of the Christian author Kathy Baldick and Ed Oxford, an advocate and gay man who grew up Southern Baptist, as they dug through archives at the Yale Sterling Memorial Library. There, they discovered correspondence between the head of the translation committee and a gay seminary student in which the committee head conceded with the student's point about the mistranslation. In the next translation in 1971, the committee changed the translation from homosexual to sexual perverts, but by then the damage was done. Hundreds of millions of Bibles with the wrong translation had been published, and conservative religion and conservative politics soon banded together to push an anti-gay agenda. Razio melded this research with her own personal story. When she was a teenager, her pastor father discovered that she was a lesbian and responded with a letter full of Bible verses imploring her to repent and forsake her identity. With the documentary, she filmed her father attending talks by Baldick and overall standing by his belief that the Bible condemns homosexuality as a sin. I can't compromise conviction, he says in the film. Prior to even knowing about the 1946 mistranslation, I was led to it because I knew I needed to use scripture to be able to have a conversation with my parents to affirm my reality and my identity, Razio said. That didn't make it easy. I knew what my dad was going to give us, Razio said. I have been around for a while and I've been dealing with this for a while and I've put up enough armor to be able to go back and have those conversations. And it was extremely painful, just as I'm sure it was painful for my dad. The documentary goes beyond this very personal throckline by focusing on the academia and research, featuring interviews with language experts and biblical scholars to provide context not just for the mistranslated verse, but the other, clobber, verses that have been cited by the Christian right as a condemnation of homosexuality. They explore Sodom and Gomorrah, and the historical context behind the Leviticus verse denouncing when, a man lies with a male as with a woman, scholars believe the verse is not alluding to homosexuality, but to ritual pagan prostitution. What we need to do is see that this is a text that is time-bound, that is determined by the culture in which it was written, and that our sense of God, our sense of the Holy Spirit, isn't time-bound, the Rev. Dr. Cheryl Anderson says in the documentary. We have to ask ourselves again, what's the word of God for this time and this place? We're not used to doing that, but that's the task because that is what the Bible does. It's reinterpreting itself. Between the research, however, Razio wove in the emotional repercussions for all members of the LGBTQ plus community, showing what it meant to feel as if they had been declared an abomination by sacred text and to grow up hearing that even God doesn't love you. Oxford has a poignant moment in the film where he admits that even as outspoken as he has been on the topic of religion and sexuality, he has not been able to allow himself to experience intimacy with anyone. I don't get depressed about damaging theology anymore, he says. I have been damaged and I get depressed over how that affects me today, the here and the now. The documentary, which opens this week, first premiered in 2022 and has already won 23 festival awards. 
but Razio admitted that the film was struggling to get wider distribution. Even before its premiere, the documentary received a lot of backlash in the form of conservative articles, radio shows, videos and sermons all attempting to debunk the research, despite some never having watched the documentary, Razio said. A woman sitting against a window with a camera in front of her view image in fullscreen. Sharon. Rocky. Razio. Photograph. 1946. But Razio in the film has also received an outpouring of support from viewers in general. The film has received more than 1,700 donations, totaling more than $150,000, on GoFundMe, to help spread its findings. Razio is hoping for more, she's looking to screen the film at churches and community centers. They have put together a workbook to help with the study of this material after viewing the film. Just as Mark 15 16 called for Christians to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation, Razio is trying to spread the film's message as far and wide as possible. We want millions of people to be able to access this information, she said. Because for gay Christians like Razio, this mistranslation means everything. It means that no one can dictate your relationship with God, she said. We've been told how we have to live as Christians by putting away our identity, a part of ourselves. But you can totally be gay and Christian. But the film's findings also hold significance beyond Christianity. Whether you're Christian or not, or whether you're religious or not, the Bible impacts you, said Razio.